dudes, it's the 1980s, the death of traditional shaving. You're watching Barber Dave's Barbershop at Home. Over time I notice There's nothing about this It ever feels quiet Welcome back. Um, before we get started, let's not forget www.theshavingcadre.com. Please come and visit us. We would certainly appreciate it. We do feel we are the finest uh, wet shaving form on the interwebs. And then also, if you would, please check out Drinks and Dave's on YouTube. Please subscribe to that. We're trying to get to 100 subscribers so we can move all of our live shows from off our channels. Uh, to that channel specifically and then right down here if you'd be so kind and follow the like subscribe and comment we would certainly appreciate it okay this is a shave that i have been regretting and with a sense of foreboding for the last couple weeks because i knew we were coming and that's right it's the 1980s to the 1990s which in my opinion was the complete utter death of traditional shaving and i'll explain why as we get into it um, to me, the late 70s ended badly with the death of my father, but the 80s were my high school, my early 80s were the high school years, and then the 80s uh, into mid, uh, mid 90s was when I had my Air Force career, which we'll go into with tomorrow's shave. But in high school, you needed to stand out. Now, after my father died, uh, my mom and I became friends, but my mom, uh, being from Puerto Rican descent, she always wanted her son to have the finest things. And God rest her soul, thank, uh, you know, some people would say I was spoiled, but in another way, my mom really took care of the things I liked. Now, part of that, as part of being a Puerto Rican boy uh, and German, uh, is to be rico suave, as they said. So my mom always uh, took care of the nicest uh, fragrances, and stuff like that. Now, I did have a lot of things left over from when my dad died in the late 70s. However, most of that went to my uncle, his brother, because my mom thought I wasn't really into it. Um, but the one thing that stuck out uh, is Brute. And so we're going to be using Brute Aftershave today. I'll go into the fragrance. And the 80s were all about big hair, as you saw on the front end of this big rock and roll, glam rock, hair rock, kiss, Ted Nugent, uh, you name it, Metallica, Poison, Rat. Uh, it was good music. And uh, what was cool about that good music is it was starting to transition into kind of the electronic synthetic rock like Gary Newman and stuff like that in the late 80s. But it was great for cruising. It was fantastic for cruising. And what did we spend our money on? Most of us, I had a job at a shoe store. Uh, and uh, what did we spend our money on? We spent our money on impressing girls with Ralph Lauren polo shirts, Sperry topsiders, uh, and stereo systems in your car. And I had a Blaupunkt uh, with Rockford Fosgate 12-inch uh, woofers and a 1966 uh, Mustang. So my Friday nights and my Saturday nights were pretty much simple. If I wasn't playing in a football game, uh, then what we did is you ran home, told your mom that you did your homework, took a shower, shaved, and got out to the car wash and then to the gas station to fill your car up for a night of cruising on Speedway. A little bit of nostalgia there. And we listened to 50s music and, and, and all kinds of music. But we were looking and we were hunting for girls. Now, shaving wasn't a big deal. You know, I had seen my dad shave and all his stuff went away. So it was about looking good. And unfortunately, there were two things that made shaving fast and easy. Because the shaving soaps and the brushes and the alum and the talc and the witch hazel, nobody used uh, even when I was in the military, it was a quick, fast, and when I was out in the field, very rarely did you get to shave anyway. So what did we use? We used the Astra, the two-bladed Astra, the, the, the wonderful pivoting head razor. Well, I, I, didn't, I don't have one anymore. I, I threw most of that stuff away because I was like, eek, and we'll go over that in the later decades where I actually rediscovered uh, traditional wet shaving. But I found something that looked like an Atra, and this is actually representative of what I shaved with. And that's right, a disposable cart. 
two blades like the Astra, and uh, it, it actually has a good shape. This is going to be horrible. Now, for the shaving cream, we didn't use brushes in the 80s. Come on, 80s to 90s. We used, are you ready? Dun, dun, da, da. That's right, Edge Gel, the blue substance that we still to this day don't know what it did to us from a uh, shaving standpoint. This is the Edge Gel. You have the Gillette version, and then you have the Schick version. The Edge Gel is the uh, Schick version. Now, I was surprised. That I actually had uh, to go out and buy this stuff because I care about my viewers. I, I, I think you guys are the greatest, and what I will suffer through uh, for you. So, um, yeah. So, the 1980s, the death of shaving. So, I do have my sink full, and we'll... Uh, I haven't used gel, uh, oh God, 30 years. So, what you did is you shook this up, and that's what you got. And I've got a little bit in the sink because I wanted to test this. And it's still in solid form. Then you would take the gel. And look at that. It created a cream. And it smelled. Actually, this smells pretty nice. It smells very barbershop-like. But you can tell that this is not something that's nourishing for your skin. It is just coating the top of your skin. And... Yeah, it, it doesn't take a lot. But see, that was a convenience. You know, you could have a can of this and a bag of disposable razors and you were good to go. Now, later on in the 90s, Gillette went hog crazy after Procter & Gamble bought them and, uh, and uh, created all these things. Now, as I'm rinsing this off, it does not come off easy. So, uh, for you YouTube guys... Here we go, 1980s to 1990s. Oh, this is horrible. But we'll see at the end what it's like. This is the two blades. So this mostly looks like the Atra. And, you know, I jest, but it, it, it's pretty smooth. And you could just throw this crap away when you were done. Now, I should say that did I shave with this, these type of strokes back then? Probably not. And I probably just did this. One stroke. No. Uh -uh. I will do a certain amount of nostalgicness to this shave. But my technique, I'm going to use as if uh, we're in today's world. I mean, the razor is smooth, but you can tell that it's, I don't know. It's nothing like what we have now. But like I said, when looking, when looking at trying to find these uh, razors, um, I wanted to find an Atra, but... I wasn't going to buy one just for this because I'll never use this stuff again. Okay, so there's a first pass. Two blades. It's not even near as close to what you get um, with a single blade now. Now, another thing is, usually the way they marketed the edge gel was that you do one pass and it's super close and, and it'll give you a great shave. Horse feathers. This is the second pass, and it's still, we're, we're, we're questing to a DSBBS shave. I don't know if we're going to get there. Now, do I still, would I use some of this stuff for travel? No. I still would bring a regular razor. Now, this is another thing that I did not do in the 80s is I didn't do an across the grain, a with the grain, and against the grain pass. As I said, there are certain things that I will not compromise on. So it's usually maybe one pass down, one pass against the grain, and then out the door. I will say this has probably a, a chemical cooling agent uh, in it. 
I don't think it's menthol because it doesn't have that menthol smell. However, it is more than likely some some chemical that they say is not safe for pets and it's probably used in pesticides. I, I just, but it does give a little bit of a cooling, but I'm not trusting that that cooling is <laughs> what it should be. Uh, the razor cleans out pretty well. It's got that comfort strip. And I know the Astros did not have the comfort strip in the beginning, but then they came out. But now, you know, they've got six, five, six bladed copies of the, uh, of the uh, disposable razors. Okay, so there's two passes, and I am still feeling <laughs> quite a bit of whiskers. So, hey, Gillette, when you say it's the best shave the man can get, or Schick, you guys are full of crap. So, anyway, so here's pass three. Now, as I said, the gel was not ever designed to do three passes. So I would guess if you did three passes a day for shaving using this gel, even though you're shaving, you're saving soap, um, you're using a lot more if you do three passes. So, um, yeah. And this stuff, I'm sorry, it feels sticky. It is slick, I'll give it that. But it's sticky and it's... Uh, we were, you know, if the 70s... Were the were the was the decade that we um, destroyed clothing. The eighties is where we destroyed shaving cream. And what's amazing is in the sink it turns a very neon color blue. Isn't that fun? Oh God. Another thing we didn't do is we didn't do cleanup. But I will definitely have to do some. So these were really quick, no-brainer shaves. Um, just so to, you know, just so you could get out the door. And I started shaving. Kind of my fault. I'd watch my dad shave, so before he passed away in the mid-70s, I would play around. And um, if you don't shave, you have what they call vellus hair. And the vellus hair will grow, but it's very light and thin. Once you shave, and then, of course, as a teenager, your testosterone starts, you will start growing a beard. And unfortunately, I did. We had guys, we had guys in, when I was a freshman that were like Sasquatch. No offense, Chad. So overall, is the shave smooth? Eh. As Sam Woodpusher on the forum would say, meh. Are these blades efficient? Meh. Okay, let's see how we did. And let's see if we can get the residual shaving cream to go down the drain. Not a terrible shave. Um, I'm still feeling some whiskers, and I'm sure that the reason for that residual slickness is not bad, probably because there's some nuclear chemicals on me, but a lot of cleanup though. But I wouldn't do that in the 80s, so I'm not going to do it now. And yes, uh, we are having trouble. You know how sometimes the toothpaste will sit at the bottom of the, of the sink? Same thing here. Okay, now, in the 80s, we didn't use uh alum or anything like that so i'm gonna do that this is gonna be a true 80s shave 80s to 90s so we just rinsed off with cold water and that's it and you can definitely feel a little bit of irritation um i would do the alum just to see but that wouldn't be authentic so real quick before we get into the other stuff so uh what was the razor today yeah one of these a disposable cart in the shape of an atra um Definitely what I used to use uh, in the 80s. They were like 12 razors for five bucks or less. Um, the shaving medium, I'm not even going to call it a cream or a gel or a shaving soap, is this stuff. 
Edge Gel for sensitive skin. Not. Okay, for the aftershave. Now, here's the thing. Normally, alum will kind of take care of a little bit of the, of the burning if there is any. We're going to go right to the brute. Now, unfortunately, this specific brute is not time uh, time period specific uh, because the Fabergé I used a long time ago because it's so good. But this is very representative. And like I said, the reason why I stuck with Brute uh, during my high school years and into the military years is because it was easy. You could get it at most PXs, uh, both here and abroad. Most of the time, the base exchanges and even in the field, the the stores would carry it. And it still smells nice. Now, that wasn't bad. I didn't get as much burn as I thought. Plus, it has that reminding me of dad. And the girls liked the brute back in the 80s. Because remember, when you were walking through, and this is what we'll get into. When you were walking through the hallways of a big high school, we had 3,000 people in my um, graduating class. So it was a big, big high school. Um, I'm sorry, 3,540 uh, in the whole school. I think our graduating class was up over 1,000. But as you're walking through the hallways and the lockers, there's all these good looking women uh, around. And so what did the guys want to do? Well, they wanted to kind of shake their tail feathers and kind of puff their chest out. And if you're on the football team, you had your letter, letterman jacket on. And on Fridays, you were wearing a shirt and tie. So you wanted to look good and you wanted the girls to notice. Well, that's when the power fragrances came out. So you had Dracar Noir, you had Jovan Musk, and that was a real killer. In fact, if I had some, I'd probably use it. And you had uh, Gray Flannel, yeah, just classic stuff. You had Quorum. These were all power fragrances of the 80s. But there was one, one that stood above them all. It was a fragrance that you could put on at 6 o'clock in the morning. And by 6 o'clock in the morning, 30 days from now, you would still smell it and just as strong. You know it, you love it. It was a green bottle. That's right. Polo Green. The most powerful fragrance ever made, in my opinion. This actually does date back to the 1980s. And I said earlier that my mom, every Christmas, every birthday, she would buy me some type of fragrance, whether that be uh, Grey Flannel, Dracar Noir, Pierre Cardin. And I think a lot of that was because it wanted, she reminded me or she wanted to be reminded of my dad. But this one was every year. I had bottles and bottles of this. In fact, at one time I had the big bottle. And this one, to this day, still has all that evergreen wonder that is um, this, this uh, stuff. And it is just... And it's actually gotten very, very thick <laughs> and green. Um, but it is, yeah, this is stuff that I think my dog's going to be running away from. So, and we didn't use talc either. So, anyhow, there's your 1980s to 19, or 1980s to 1990s uh, shave. Um, not horrible, but... Would I uh, would I do it again? Uh, well, that depends. So anyhow, that's it, guys, from Barber Dave's Barbershop at Home. I'm Barber Dave, and that's been your Shave of the Decades, 1980 to 1990. Uh, please join us again tomorrow for 1990 to 2000. Hope everybody has a blessed Sunday, and I hope you're enjoying this, and uh, we'll talk to you very soon. Take care. Mm -hmm.